Good afternoon. I'm sure we all use post-it notes. My home is full of post-it notes. My wife reminds me what to do next. <laughs> Have you ever wondered how post-it note was discovered? For that matter, what about Teflon by DuPont, X-ray, Tire, Viagra, Velcro, Microwave, they were all discovered by accident, or we call serendipity. The word serendipity was first coined by Horst Walpole, based on a Prussian tale, The Three Princes of Serendip. In this tale, the princes were making discoveries, amazing discoveries, by accident and by sagacity or keen sense. In fact, in science, we use serendipity quite often when lucky breaks turn into breakthrough discoveries. That's what happened in 2009 in my laboratory at Oregon State University. In 2008, I received a grant from National Science Foundation to discover some very exotic materials which can revolutionize the computer industry. I thought Intel will like it because it's in Oregon. So for that purpose, we choose four elements in the periodic table, yttrium, indium, manganese, and oxygen. There are reasons behind this choosing those elements, but that is out of this, beyond the scope of this talk. <laughs> so then I asked my graduate student to mix three chemicals, yttrium oxide, which is white, indium oxide, which is yellow, and manganese oxide, which is black. He mixed them, put them in the furnace, we went home. So next day morning, I was in the lab when he opened the furnace and removed the samples. I was shocked. They came brilliantly blue. So like any other professor, I turned to the student and I said, what the heck you did? <laughs> that is not the four-letter word I used. He said, that's what you asked me to do. So we repeated it, because in my 40 years of research I'm doing, I never really thought a manganese compound will produce such a brilliant blue color. So we did the, we did the experiment, and I would like to find out where the blue come from. Imagine a world without colors. I'm sure it is a very boring world. Now see with colors, it's a beautiful world. When a white light shines on an object, the way we see color, part of the color get absorbed, part of the color get reflected. What we see is a reflected color. So that depends on the nature of the chemical compound on the surface of the material, such as paint. Although we understand that, it is very difficult to predict the color of the compound before you make it. For example, take an example of a uh, ruby and emerald. In both cases, the color comes from chromium. So chromium will not always give green or red. So I, as a scientist, I don't have any way of predicting the color before I make the compound in the lab. So where does the blue color come from? So we spent a lot of time on studying the intricate chemistry of this pigment, and we found out the color comes from the manganese in the unusual coordination, which has been never seen before. So clearly this compound is very stable. It is not possible to soluble in, it's not soluble in water or acid or alkali. So immediately I thought this compound should be a very good for a pigment applications. So we filed a patent and also we published this work in a, in a very top tier journal in chemistry, which is the Journal of American Chemical Society. And a Shepherd Color Company showed immediate interest because they make the color pigments. As soon as we published our results, to my surprise and astonishment, all the news outlets called me and tried to cover our discovery. It, is, it was covered by CNN, BBC News, New York Times, even the Washington Post. I was a bit worried because somebody may think it's a fake news. <laughs> so I was so happy when Fox News called me. <laughs> <laughs> and then when the reporter called me, I said, 
are you sure you want to color, cover this scientific discovery? Because the blue discovery from a blue state, <laughs> and also by a blue chemist, because I like blue, she said, even people live in red states like blue color. <laughs> to my surprise and my daughter's excitement, it was covered in Cosmopolitan, <laughs> Harper Bazaar, and Teen Vogue. I still remember vividly my daughter texted me, Dad, you finally made it. <laughs> a, a video in a, now in a social media has seen 15 million times. It is more than Lady Gaga's video posted at the same time on the million reasons. I can give you a million reasons why chemistry is fun. <laughs> why the blue is so fascinating? That is because blue is very difficult to make. Living organisms cannot make blue color. Whenever you see vivid color on morpho butterfly, peacock, even blue eyes, they don't have an atom of pigment. The, 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 the way that the color comes from, because the way light reflects from their structure, it's called structural color. So blue is the most difficult color to make in nature. Even when you look at the prehistoric paintings, there were no blue. That is because the earlier civilization has no access to blue, color, blue pigment, because blue is not an earthen color. So clearly blue is the most fascinating. The first blue pigment came into existence was lapis lazuli, which was in the 3000 BCE. It was a vivid pigment, but it is still not very used today other than decorative purposes because it's not a very stable pigment. However, Egyptians adored the blue of lapis lazuli's blue and adorned their tombs and funerary mask with it. When Michelangelo painted the Sistine Chapel, he demanded that he wants to use lapis lazuli because of the vividness. So clearly, there are only very few blue pigments known in the world today. One is the Egyptian blue, because Egyptians tried to mimic the lapis lazuli, because lapis lazuli was very expensive, more expensive than gold. So they wanted to try to do it, but they couldn't make it. Next came the Prussian blue, another accidental discovery in 1702, 1704 in Germany. And the next one is the cobalt blue, which was 1802. For 200 years, there were no discoveries. The first blue pigment ever discovered in the United States was the Enmin blue. In addition to pretty blue, our blue pigment also can reflect heat. That means if you use this paint to paint your roofs or on the car, it will keep the car cooler or the house cooler, actually, by saving the energy bills. So it is a discovery beyond the color. All the artists were so happy to see this new pigment, because they were tired of painting using only cobalt blue or Persian blue. So I had a lots of inquiries from all over the world. It was painted from Austria, painters from Australia to Europe, even in Japan, they used our pigments in their creations. To satisfy these needs, a company now in Australia makes this pigment for sale. Recently, I was in Australia for a conference. I visited a store in Sydney. I could see these tubes are sold. It was so amazing because this is the discovery you made in Oregon in a small town called Carvalis. It is now sold in, in Sydney in the stores. Finally, to my amazement, I work with electrons and protons and neutrons. I never thought crayons would be interested in, <laughs> in my, my research. Crayola called me and said they would like to introduce a new blue color based on our discovery. Finally, after the poll from the from United States, they decided to name the blue, it's called beautiful. <laughs> you know, the, the, as a scientist, I was so happy to discover the blue but I want to see what can I do with this discovery? Can I go beyond the blue? So by looking at the chemistry carefully, by tweaking the chemistry, by replacing the manganese with copper, we made the beautiful green pigments. That is the University of Oregon color, so they're very happy. <laughs> and then we, 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 we put iron for the manganese, we made the beautiful orange color. That is our OSU color. So the, 
by using some titanium and zinc, we made the purple color. So clearly we went beyond the blue. Now we are looking for the red pigment in my lab. I always tell my students, you never know what you are going to discover. Maybe we'll finally discover the electronic materials we are looking for by, when you're exploring this. So I was extremely fortunate and maybe lucky to make this discovery with my student. But I want to remind this, luck favors only the prepared mind. Thank you very much.